Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video I'll show you how to make a cranky. This is a type of moving panorama, and the image that comes to my mind when I think of those are those old theater productions that had a painted scrolling background. Um, this is a tiny laser cut version of something like that. Usually called a cranky because they have two cranks that help you turn the scroll so you can display the image. I initially developed this laser cut version because I wanted to make several uh, of these so I could try out the technique, but also because I wanted to use it as a class activity and I thought it'd be fun to have a kid version of it. The Cuddle template version we are releasing with this video is an improvement over those previous attempts because now you can change some dimensions like the material thickness or even the size of the strip so you can make it work with the materials that you have or the characteristics of your machine. Another cool thing that we did is that we made a way to upload a long, narrow image and automatically divide it into strips that you can print and then glue together to make the long scroll. So let me tell you about the materials that we'll be using, then I'll show you how to download and assemble a basic version first, and after that I'll show you how to customize other dimensions. So let's get started. We're going to be using some regular printer paper. For the wood, we'll be using some 1/8 inch MDF, some general purpose glue, and finally, a regular pencil. The first step is going to be to measure the thickness of the wood. It's nice to take several readings in different spots and then choose a reasonable average. In this case, 0.117 is the winner. You will find the link to this project in the video description. Once I'm here in the project page, the first thing I'm going to do is scroll down to see the first set of components I need to download. The only thing we'll be changing for this first example is the material thickness, which is the dimension we measured in the previous step. So I'm going to click on the field and then type the number and then press enter to confirm. I'm going to leave the curve compensation value as the default but you would only change the number if the fit of your tabs is not quite good. The thing to remember is that the bigger this number, the tighter the fit becomes. This project in particular is a little bit more forgiving because we're going to be using glue to uh, join those. When I'm ready to download my SVG, I'm going to click the blue button. And when setting this up in the laser cutter, you should know that the black lines are all inside cuts and the red lines are the outside cuts. So you want to do the inside cuts first. Here I have all the parts and the first thing we're going to glue are these four pieces with the small tabs. I find it easier to put some glue on a piece of scrap and then use the toothpick to apply it. I like to put a little bit on each finger or tab and then press them together. After that, I'm just wiping the excess glue with the toothpick. And now it's a matter of repeating the same operation on the remaining parts. For these two bottom ones, I'm going to go ahead and apply the glue on both sides before I press them together. If some of the glue squeezes out from the joints, you can wipe it with your finger. This is the base and it also gets some glue on the tabs. Then we'll press it together and wipe off the excess glue. And this is the basic frame of our cranky. Now let's do the cranks. We'll start by pushing one of the four spacers all the way to the end. And it goes on the frame like this. It's important that this part rotates as freely as possible. So we'll use some pencil graphite as a sort of dry lubricant in all of the places where the crank comes in touch with the frame. And that includes that washer we installed in the crank. When I put it back on the frame, I gave it a good rubbing to make sure both surfaces were well coated. I'm giving the same treatment to the other washer before I install it on the crank. Then it goes back on the frame with a little rubbing to make sure it spins freely. The next two also get a bit of graphite and these will retain the cranks on the frame. So we're gonna apply a little bit of glue. Then we can press fit them on the bottom section of the crank and the fit should be as loose as possible, so make sure the crank spins freely. Now repeating the same operation on the other side. And the fit is loose enough that there is a little bit of a gap here, but that's totally fine because the crank spins well. For the scroll or the piece of paper where the artwork is going to be, we have a few options. You can always cut a long strip of paper by measuring it. Um, the height of that paper scroll is going to be specified here. That's the scroll height. 
Um, another option is to check out the components. I'm going to scroll down to see it. So we have one that is a printable blank. So we can simply download a PDF and it will have all these strips with a little glue section um, that you can cut and then glue together. The other option is to use a digital image. So I'm going to scroll down here to show you how that works. So with this component, you can upload a single horizontal long image that will get chopped into strips that fit on the specified paper size. We left that default as letter size uh, paper because that's what most of us can easily print. You can get a sense for what the image looks like here in the thumbnail, but uh, let me show you that image real quick. I drew that as an example and you're free to use it or use it as inspiration. So as you can see, it's a long image uh, that gets chopped. And here are a couple of other examples. Uh, this is another drawing and this is a panoramic photo um, that's also usable. And this is a level from Super Mario Brothers. So if we go here and click choose image and upload any of these, let's try the Super Mario Brothers map. Um, you'll see how it gets chopped and divided into the strips that, it, that we can cut and then glue together. Uh, but let's choose another one here. Let's choose these uh, other drawing. So when you've uploaded your image and you're ready, you can download a PDF and print it. So let me show you how to prepare that scroll and then put it into the cranky. This is the printable blank and you can see the glue tabs here. And I'm going to start by trimming the margins, then cutting all the strips. Then apply a thin layer of glue on the glue tab and then line up the next strip. Repeat this operation a few more times and then you will have about 53 inches of scroll to draw on. And here's a printed example. I'm going to cut the strips with the artwork on them, then the bottom margin. Then I'm only cutting this white margin on the strips where I need the artwork to overlap, like in this case. The glue tab gets a little bit of glue and then I line it up the best I can. Same thing on the following section. Although I feel I didn't do a great job here. The end of the strip doesn't get cut because we'll be using it to insert it into the slit of the crank. A little wiggling helps if you're having trouble. Then we'll add some glue and fold it over to make sure it doesn't come off. And at this point, we can roll the entire scroll onto one of the cranks. Then we can insert the other end of the scroll onto the slit and repeat the same steps. I'm going to fold it over, apply some glue, make sure it sticks well, then roll it one more time to make sure things are working. This step is completely optional, but I decided to paint the front of the frame so the artwork would be more prominent. This is perhaps not the best moment to do it, but I was very careful and it turned out okay. Alright, so if you've made it this far, you're probably interested in customizing the crankies even further. So I'm going to mention a couple of things just to get you on your way. So the first thing to know is that the vertical dimension of the cranky is determined by the height of the scroll or the piece of paper. So you'll see that if I increase this dimension, that will be the size of the paper, but this updates uh, the size of the frame and all the other components that go with that. The second thing is that the overall uh, horizontal dimension of the crank is determined by the size of the window, of the viewing window. So right here, the distance between this edge and this edge is two inches. Uh, but if I increase that, you'll see that that also changes the overall position of everything else. So let's make it something like three. And if you were to toggle this advanced section open, you'll see that there are a few more things to explore. 
Uh, but I'm only going to mention a couple right now. With the scroll margin uh, option, you can change the size of the window. So that is roughly how much of the paper gets hidden by the window. So the bigger the margin, more of it gets hidden. Another thing you might run into is that uh, with different material thicknesses, the tabs might get uh, too big or too small. So you can change that. This is the tab width for the roller assembly, um, which is this section over here. You might have to change that. And then the tab width for the base uh, is here. So you'll see that sometimes you might want more or less tabs, depending on how difficult it is to assemble it. I wouldn't call this a practical project necessarily, um, but I think it has some sort of playful charm. I guess the moving panorama is like an ancestor to the film screen. And in some ways is kind of fun and interesting to revisit these old ways to uh, present and look at images with sort of new technologies. Um, so I hope you found it interesting too. Uh, I hope you had some fun watching it and you can help the channel by clicking like and subscribing or leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. And thank you so much for watching.